All right, so here's part two of the histology review. It is really lengthy, but hopefully going to be very helpful. So I split it into two portions. We're going to get into some a little bit more um, non-distinct slides. In other words, these are going to be more like what you look at under the microscope. We've had a lot of really idealized pictures before now. We're going to get to a little bit more difficult ones, I think, in this section. All right, so what do we have going on here? And it's already kind of labeled as epithelium, okay? Um, there at the top, you can see we've got some ciliated columnar, but that's not what we're looking at. We're looking at now the tissue below, okay? So this is not a very typical looking sample. We're looking at this here, okay? This is a very much harder, very not normal looking um, type of loose connective tissue here, also called areolar. You can't see very well, but you do have some fibroblasts. They're just not stained. Um, um, you also have, well, you can see the fibroblasts, they're pink. You also have um, those long fibers that is going to be uh, your collagen fibers uh, and your elastin. Okay, so you can kind of see that running back and forth in the field. But like I said, this is a much more difficult view of something like Areolar, okay. Most likely, when I pick slides, I try to pick ones that are um, a little more typical, and this is kind of atypical here. And a lot of it is because they're not; it's not stained, okay. So this is a section through the duodenum, all right. Um, and so you've got those bundles of fibers there that are layered up that you can see in the field, and you can see the fibroblast, okay. So that's how I would identify this one. Don't let this freak you out too much, though, because like I said, uh, this is a very atypical slide, okay. All right, so here we go. What is this one? Well, I see spaces, um, but is that a lumen? Is that a free space? And there's lots of material inside that, okay? So let's break this down. Do I have a nice organized pattern of cells lining those circular areas? Not really. I don't really see any, uh, for instance, um, I don't see a pattern of cuboidal or squamous cells right there. So this is not an epithelium, okay? This is not an epithelium. And I have a lot of stuff here, lots and lots of stuff in here, okay? So um, this is going to be a connective tissue, okay? Um, and that's what's on the majority of this. Well, it's actually all connective tissue, but we're looking mostly from here and above and from here down, okay? Um, and so this is going to be found in the ends of long bones, and this is going to be underneath compact bones. Remember, this has a very spongy looking appearance to it. This is spongy bone. Uh, this in the middle here is going to be your red bone marrow, okay? Red bone marrow. So you're going to see large open portions filled with marrow, and then you're going to see this here. You're going to see um, that appearance here with a very few little dots located and, and almost kind of some fibers looking running through. You're going to find this in the ends of those long bones, like I said, surrounded by the um, compact bone, like in the epiphysis, which we will be learning about soon, um, vertebrae, ribs, uh, pelvis, that type of thing. And this would be classified as connective tissue. All right, so do you recognize this? This one is often confused with the type of muscle tissue. How do I know this is not muscle? Well, it's because I have all those white spaces, okay? A lot of times people will think that this is cardiac muscle tissue. No, way too many white spaces. The fibers are too far apart. This looks like finger painting, so this is going to be that dense, irregular connective tissue, and this is often found in the dermis just below the epithelium, and we have seen lots of examples on this on other slides, okay? No Notice that irregular pattern. Um, it looks like you could just take your finger and paint this and you have all the big white space. All right, so what do I have here? I have lots of openings, um, almost kind of resembles uh, adipocytes in the fact that it's so open, but I have those nice layer of uh, really square cells um, that have big, thick nuclei showing, okay? Now, this is one layer of cells. Don't be confused, okay? So this is lining this particular thing. 
and then this is lining this particular way. Okay, so that's not stratified. That's single layers, and it's surrounding each lumina. So you kind of have to break that down. And so this is simple cuboidal epithelium. It's cube-shaped. It's in one layer, and this is actually from the thyroid gland. And so you would have some hormonal secretions that would be in this lumen in this case. Classification, epithelium. This is one of those that if you miss, I'm going to give you the evil eye while I'm grading your paper. This should be the most obvious one that we have. We have these little red concentric circles with a few of these purple with really dark purple uh, nuclei in them, which are white blood cells. And the red ones are red blood cells. All right. And so this is blood. This should be very easy. OK, now you do need to work at knowing that it is a connective tissue. We don't think of blood as a tissue, but it is good connective tissues. And the features would be uh, that these are the red blood cells. These are the white blood cells, and these little dots, kind of hard to see here, those are the platelets, okay? And this is going to be found in your blood vessels. All right, here we go. What have I got here? Pause this and see if you can completely name this on your own. All right, and I actually have two different types of tissue here, so that's kind of a tricky one. So I would need to point and ask you for which one specifically I wanted. And if I didn't specifically, actually I see three now, if I didn't specifically ask for one particular particular type, um, I would need to, add, well, maybe it's just two, but anyway, um, you would want to go with whatever was there in the largest abundance. Okay, so let's go with that first, and that's going to be these that are surrounding these lupins. Those are pretty abundant, so that's the predominant type here okay I've got several of these lumen right and so what do I have well I basically have some square shaped cells in their single layer all right surrounding the lumen so it is epithelium it is simple and it is cuboidal so this is simple cuboidal epithelium now did you find the other tissue type here I have some simple squamous epithelium lining it right there Okay, and that's the more flat cells. Okay, so just a little note there. If you see that, uh, you're going to see more than one tissue type. But look at what is the predominant thing. If you're not sure uh, we're in class, then just ask me. All right, what do I have here? You should be getting pretty used to this one by now. Hmm. I've got more than one type of tissue here. So which one am I asking? I actually need to look and see, okay? Because I actually see that I have some stratified squamous here at the top, okay? But what I'm looking for is this here at the bottom. What is this bottom layer, okay? Well, it is pretty dense. I see white gaps. So this is irregular in pattern. It's not zoomed in, so I can't tell that it has that finger painted look, but I can kind of see that with my eye. So I've got dense, irregular tissue. I've got those collagen fibers and inner uh, woven irregular patterns, okay? And so this is found that mostly in the dermis, remember, below the layer of the skin, okay? Below the uh, epidermis, sorry, all right? And like I said, this is stratified squamous up here, and this is very heavily keratinized. So I could have asked you about all of that on this one particular slide. All right, so what do I have here? I see I've got a free surface here on this apical surface. I have that big white opening there, and so I know this is epithelium, okay? I'm looking pretty much for this layer down here, all right? Um, and so I've got some flattish looking squares and it looks stratified. So I need to decide what type this is. Is this stratified squamous? Stop and pause and decide. If you said nope, what did you think it was? Transitional epithelium. You don't have that heavy dense. They're darker down here, but you don't have that heavy dense layer of those really dark nuclei where they're getting blood and nourishment and then dying. You have really, really big circles up here, and they're just not getting that flattened appearance to them like you would normally see. So this is transitional epithelium. Okay, classification is epithelium. The cells nearest the apex or, or the outside portion here are rounded. It's a very diagnostic feature of epithelium. Okay, um, and they're just kind of irregular. Some are here, they're bigger, some are here, they're flatter. It's just as if a good regular pattern to it. Okay, areas like the bladder. All right, so here we've got two things going on, right? I've got this line right there. I can almost just see a line there. Okay, so this is an exact. 
section from the intestines. And this shows a large mass of this right here. What is this? Okay, I see some nuclei and some gaps, and I see a very striated, well, not very, but I do see a striated appearance to it, okay? And so this is smooth muscle, and that is one of the harder muscles to identify, smooth muscle, okay? Um, the outer layer runs longitudinally. The inner layer here is actually running circular on this side, so that's why it looks so different, okay? Because you have a totally different cross-section there. Now, I would not ask you to identify that as um, muscle because I try to stay away from having to learn it longitudinal and cross-section okay but just so you know what that is all right all right I want you to pause this I want you to give me the name the classification and the features and where in the body you find this if you said adipose you were correct which is a connective tissue the feature that you're going to have here is this darkened portion is the nucleus and you can find this uh, in areas like the stomach or surrounding the visceral organs don't miss this one easy now this one has some little words on here that are kind of help you cheat but if you don't look at them stop and decide what this is all right so this is muscle fiber what type well i see very distinct alternating dark and light bands so this must be skeletal muscle fiber you can also see the feature here is pointed out to the nucleus uh, we'll learn about the perichondrium and perimecium here later you don't have to worry about that right now but you should be able to identify this as the skeletal muscle uh, and that is going to be in pretty much what we call muscles all right what we think of as muscles so that other one the smooth muscle that's going to be found in areas like your intestines i forgot to tell you that on that slide this is going to be in those large muscles which uh, are found on the bones help with movement okay so this is a harder one I was just trying to evaluate if I even wanted to keep it or not but let's go ahead and keep it because it's got some interesting things on here okay so this is the lining of capillaries okay and you can see the capillary is noted there a capillary is one cell layer thick and that's what makes this kind of hard so what we're looking for is what type of tissue is this surrounding that opening, that lumen, okay? That's going to be simple squamous epithelium, okay? And so there's really literally only one or two cells that are surrounding that capillary, okay? You can tell there's like two here, maybe three here, and it almost looks like just one there, because there's probably two, okay? Um, these dense um, purple bodies that you see here, this, these are actually motor neurons and that's like the synaptic knob of some of these motor neurons and so that's one of the reasons I wanted to keep it because that was pretty neat okay now you wouldn't have to identify that all right but you would be able to tell me that the lining of these capillaries is going to be simple squamous epithelium so this is a kind of hard one. It does have the goblet cells uh, identified here for you, okay? I can see some cilia here at the top and a free surface, so I know it is epithelium, okay? This is has a stratified appearance to it, but is it truly stack stratified? And this one, it's fuzzy and it's very hard to tell. You can kind of see that this is going down. All right, um, so this is pseudostratified columnar epithelium, and it is ciliated. The features are going to be these goblet cells. All right, and you're going to find this in areas of the trachea. All right. So here is another harder one. The tissue in and of itself is generally easier, but some of yous make it a little more difficult to differentiate what this is, okay? So what am I looking at? I see some open spots, and, and we may have some, I'd have to really zoom that in. That could be a lumen in there, but overall, I'm looking at this in here, okay? Looking at that in there, and I see some branched fibers in there branched fibers and this is actually reticular okay um so we've got some reticular fibers here uh, and this is a connective tissue okay this is a loose connective tissue all right so what is this tissue where are its features and where would we find this well i can see i've got a free surface so i know that i must have epithelium all right, I've got some cilia here at the top, and I've got really elongated cells. And the nucleus are actually pretty regular looking here, okay? This is from the duodenum and the jejunum. 
uh, you can see that clearly defined apical, apical free surface. And this is actually what you would call a brush border. And we won't really talk about that until AP2 and just barely, barely. You can also see um, the goblet cells here and they are still creating some mucus right there, which is really pretty cool. So here we have um, simple columnar. All right. Um, we could make an argument. Is it pseudo stratified? Mm, it doesn't really look stratified to me. So I would say simple columnar epithelium uh, and it is ciliated. All right, so here's another one of those difficult ones. Okay, I'm giving you several examples of these, and this one is hard to tell. So I want you to stop and figure out what this is. All right, so now that you've hopefully paused and tried to decide what this is, we have a free surface, so we know it is epithelium. It's definitely stratified, and it looks like squamous. So we've got to decide, is this stratified squamous, or is this uh, transitional? Okay, so... What do we look for? Well, these don't get too flat looking at the top, but in general they are a little flatter as they go. Although they're not real regular, they do tend to get flatter as they go. And again, I've got this really dense, healthy, living cells there. Remember, they die as they move away and they get flattened and smushed up here until eventually they will keratinize. All right, so this is stratified squamous epithelium and not transitional. This is another one that is commonly misnamed. What do we have here? If you said muscle, you're wrong. This is not muscle. This is actually dense connective tissue. You can tell that it's not muscle uh, by looking at these little white sections here, okay, with the dark pots, parts in there. Muscle nuclei are not usually surrounded by white. You might occasionally see it, but predominantly these are surrounded by white plus I have these really large white sections so that tells me that this is a dense connective tissue so be careful on this one okay this is going to be found in areas like the mesentery all right so we've got two things here two different types of tissues and uh, I want you to identify both of these for me the one on the bottom and the one on the top so pause this and let's do that all right, so here at the bottom is a connective tissue. Well, let's start at the top. We have a free surface up here, right? So I've got this free surface that tells me it's an epithelium. And I have this really dark layer, and I can't see the shape of the cells too well, but I can tell that they're getting packed, and this is a whole lot of keratinization there. So this is simple squamous epithelium, and it is very keratinized, okay? Um, we'll look, uh, I think the next slide, I focus more on that. I'm not real sure. I, I know it's tied to the slide, but I can't remember. Um, and so this down here, what is this? What underlies usually an epithelium is going to be that dense connective tissue, the irregular connective tissue. Dense, irregular connective tissue, lots of white, irregular uh, patterns to it, okay? Well, I don't know why I had a note about the next slide on here. I must have decided not to use whatever it was. But so what do we have here, okay? This is, again, a little bit harder one okay uh so let's decide all right uh pause it and see what you think this is okay let's see how close you get all right so this is um let's see we've kind of got infoldings okay so again this we got to remember this is two layers they're separate layers okay and again here this is separate layer so this is like microvilli Okay, so it's folded. So this is microvilli. Okay, and so I have got these cells here. Excuse me, that these are long nuclei at the bottom, so they are columnar. I've got lots of goblet cells, so lots and lots of mucus. All right, and this is one layer. Okay, and the reason I know it's one layer is because I have this opening in between the two. All right, and remember, uh, stratified columnar is very rare. So if you have to guess, you need to say simple. Simple columnar, lots and lots of goblet cells, okay? Uh, you can identify the base of the cell by looking at the nuclei, uh, and those are in the row beneath the goblet cells, okay? 
All right, so this one is one of the not so obvious ones, okay? Um, it says perichondrium, which is kind of a hint. If you've studied it enough, you may not know what that is, though, because I don't believe that's on our list of structures to know. But I see chondrocytes in lacuna, okay? Uh, they're not as densely packed as they normally are in this type of tissue. So I need to look at the matrix. Is it scratchy? No, it is not scratchy, okay? So this is going to be hyaline cartilage. It doesn't have that pretty glassy appearance we usually see with highland cartilage but this is highland cartilage okay the matrix is smooth all right so this particular slide is stained differently than normal which can sometimes throw students off all right I have two different types of tissues here um, that I want to point out in the middle here it's kind of hard to tell but I have some adipocytes okay so I have some fat cells there which are connective tissues all right and then over here and surrounding all of those adipocytes I have some loose connective tissue okay and so I can see that it is kind of in long strands um, but I don't have chondrocytes so I know it's not cartilage okay so this is in the mesentery and you do have those adipocytes and that loose connective tissue and they're both classified as, as uh, connective tissue all right so this one should be pretty easy here um, it's a pretty classic appearance and what you want to focus on is this big thing right here Okay, and there are smaller ones over here, but don't be thrown off by these long fibers and the dots and think that this is areolar because areolar doesn't have anything that big in there. Okay, and so this is nervous tissue and this is a neuron. So here is the soma or the cell body that is the nucleus okay uh, we have dendrites and then we have an axon all right now there are different types of, of, of uh, neural cells so sometimes you'll, you'll have an axon on both sides but generally the long skinnier portions are going to be the axons i'm sorry the dendrites and the longer thicker portion will be the um, axon and so this is a neuron and it's nervous tissue all right, so this one's again, this is a little bit harder one. Remember I said I was going to save um, some of these harder ones for the end after we looked at some really obvious ones. So stop and think, figure out what type this is. Give me the name, the classification, features, and where in the body, okay? All right, so here we have spongy bone. I've got lots of openings. Now, there's not a ton of matrix. Uh, bone marrow in here but you can clearly see, <coughs> see the bone marrow <coughs> excuse me you can clearly see the bone marrow in there and it's got that spongy appearance to it and remember this is found in the ends of long bones it would be below the compact bone or surrounded be in the epiphysis of the bone and it has red bone marrow in it and this is a connective type of tissue all right, I've got a couple different cells over here. I want you to look at the one in the arrow, and then I want you to also uh, classify this one here for me. So pause and name these. So this is actually in Bowman's capsule, so don't be thrown off by this stuff here, okay? So the one that I'm pointing to here, that is going to be lining a lumen, all right? So that is your simple squamous epithelium. And then here I have simple cuboidal okay simple cuboidal all right and so Bowman's capsule capsule is part of your um, nephron which is which is part of your kidney which does filtration and so that's why you need that simple squamous epithelium there in order to filter things very easily in and out this should be a pretty obvious one here for you pause and name it give me the category as well all right, so here we have that classic areolar. Sometimes people confuse this with nervous, but only if they have been looking at the cross section of nervous, which I have told you not to worry about, okay? And so we've got those long collagen and thin fibrin, uh, fibers in here. We've got fibroblasts and mast cells, and it looks like a spider web. So this is areolar, okay? Areolar, in this case, connective tissue. Should be an easier one here. Pause and figure it out all right so I've got lots of chondrocytes in lacuna here the matrix has that scratchy appearance to it so this is elastic cartilage okay you can see lots of elastin fibers there all right so this is a kind of a difficult one so I want you to stop and see if you can figure out what this is 
All right, and so what do we have here, okay? I've got goblet cells, I've got a lumen, and so I know this is epithelium, but what type is this? This looks very much like columnar, uh, but here it almost looks like I have two layers of columnar here, doesn't it? And so you've got to look at the overall look. This is actually one of those rare findings of stratified columnar epithelium, and you've got your goblet cells and you've got your... Um, nuclei and if you'll notice the nuclei are arranged very similarly so it's not pseudostratified remember pseudostratified they're very uneven here these nuclei are pretty even they look kind of along the same plane all right <clears throat> this one should be very obvious by now now i don't want you to be misled <clears throat> well first i want you to pause it and name it all right so if you came up with stratified squamous epithelium keratinized you are correct okay um, you can see there's a lot of keratin now this is a very very thick layer of keratin uh, it's often not that thick it's often just a few a few layers here okay um, but this is going to be your skin no longer have any nuclei up here so this is just a very keratinized layer of stratified squamous epithelium All right, so this is a harder one, okay? So stop and think about what this is, okay? Try to figure it out. And what's going to be hard, is this a connective tissue or a muscle tissue, okay? This is dense, regular connective. You've got regular striated layers, which makes it look a lot like muscle, right? Um, and this is actually from the tendon which connects muscles to bone and you've got these long thin fibroblasts so they don't really look like nuclei so that can kind of help you in this case to see there's no distinct nuclei here okay so that helps you to know this is dense regular connective what on earth is this this hasn't been the quite obvious one that i've shown you stop and see if you can figure it out all right so you might have said reticular but you'll notice there's not a whole lot of branches that are that are that are not most of the lines here are going like this or like this right reticular is just kind of that like a reticulated python it's just very irregular okay here i've got this little concentration portion with this really thick uh, extension and then all these little branches and so this is nervous tissue and those are neurons okay so this is just zoomed out more this is actually in the cortex of the brain and so we in our brain we have lots and lots of neurons all right so here you can see that cell body okay so here's a good example here's the cell body right there um the axon and then all these other things are the dendrites so it's nervous tissue so I don't know this close-up view you might can tell a little better that this is nervous tissue you might still confuse it with reticular so look for those distinct differences reticular is going to have more very uneven branches okay and you're not going to have things concentrated around that soma or cell body so this one has a special stain so this is why I always tell students not to try to memorize colors because that can change all right this one has a special stain <coughs> for the um, goblet cells here and this is actually from the salivary gland all right this is actually stratified cuboidal epithelium all right so I've got kind of what I can tell is cube shaped because I have these goblet cells kind of smushing and moving things around that makes it very difficult okay but I've got stratified cupoidal here I've got multiple layers it almost looks columnar up here so this makes this one very very difficult this is a harder one <clears throat> and it's zoomed in quite a bit you can see some collagen fibers that are stained in blue this is actually loose connective tissue okay so you've got some of those white spaces loose connective tissue all right so pause and tell me what this is you can actually name two things on here all right so what have i got going on here well did you say ciliated pseudostratified columnar yep pseudostratified columnar it does have cilia and i've got some uh, dense connective uh, irregular connective uh, tissue dense irregular connective tissue below that okay i've got the basement membrane down here i've got cilia up here in my nuclei and this is that pseudostratified columnar uh, and you need to say ciliated and epithelium all right pause this tell me what it is see if you can identify some features
<clears throat> All right, here we have compact bone. Should be obvious. Looks like tree rings. Uh, I have this one particular, I meant to use red. There we go. One particular concentric circle. What is the name of that? That is an osteon. Osteon in the center there, I've got the herversion or central canals. So this is compact bone and it is classified as connective tissue. All right, so this one again, this is an acid fast thing, so it looks a little different. So pause and see if you can figure out what this is. All right, <clears throat> so I've got flat looking cells. They look kind of like squamous. So again, is this going to be transitional or a stratified squamous? Because they definitely look stratified here, okay? And I've got this uh, opening here. Don't worry about that word calyx. I've got that opening, so I know it's epithelium. Um, but I am not seeing a real regular, uh, if we're looking at this being the bottom, they are dense there, but they're not getting really very flat. I mean, this one maybe is sideways, but I mean, it's really, really not much flatter here than it is over here. Okay, so this is transitional epithelium. No regular pattern found in the bladder. All right, so here's another one of those commonly misnamed. Stop and tell me what it is. All right, so hopefully you realized it's not skeletal muscle. This one is kind of hard, but it does have a lot more white patterns. Not skeletal muscle, you would probably say smooth muscle. Um, but it is not muscle. This is dense, regular uh, connective tissue. Um, this is of what you call the uh, ligamentum nuchae in the neck. Okay, so dense, regular connective tissue. It does have what appears to be striations, but it's got a little too much white, okay? Um, and there's white around the little darker portions. All right, so what is this one? And we're looking at this section right here. I've got the free surface, so that is my uh, epithelium, right? Which type? Is it stratified? Is it transitional? Well, this is going to be stratified. They're more round than they are flat going this way. They're very flat this way. Okay, uh, so this is stratified squamous epithelium, and this is in the esophagus. All right, so here's another one of those hard to tell ones. Stop and think. Stop and figure out what this is. Pause it. All right, so this one, while I do have some white up here, in here and along the nuclei, I don't have a lot of white and I have a whole lot of nuclei. So this is smooth muscle. It's not real striated, although I think it still kind of has a striated appearance personally, although it's called non-striated. This is an involuntary muscle and it's found in areas like your intestines uh, and those areas where we need muscles, even around your esophagus, um, where you need uh, muscles to work on for the involuntary side, okay? Um, <clears throat> So the nuclei, um, they're a little elongated, but you can tell they're not the really long, flat strands that we see with that uh, connective tissue, okay? And so this is going to be your smooth muscle. Um, I don't feel like I put enough smooth muscle in here, okay? Um, so you might want to practice and look up some more smooth muscle. Smooth pink, um, not smooth, but a pink cytoplasm here. Um, not real striated, not a whole lot of details. So the labels on here kind of give this away, but what I would most likely give you is a picture like this, and I would ask you, what is this tissue? And then I would ask you, what is that feature? And so if you look for these little defining features there, I can see they have alternating bands, okay, which makes me think skeletal muscle. But I see some of these connecting uh, bands on here. I really see it on this one. Okay, now I'm not going to give you slides that have words on them, so don't think that, but I can see the intercalated disc. So, so that helps me to uh, know that this is going to be cardiac. That helps you to differentiate, and the alternating bands are not near as prominent, okay? So you're going to have those striations that run perpendicular to the muscle fibers. That's what tells you it is cardiac. This is another one I think I need to give you more on that I haven't. I'll have to go back and add at some point. Stop and see if you can figure out what this is. It is difficult, okay? I can see a very few interspersed 
lacuna with chondrocytes. They're very light, but they are here, okay? You might confuse this with dense connective or even uh, smooth muscle, okay? But this has some chondrocytes. It's got that wavy uh, appearance to it. Um, and it's got those, those, that's the collagen fibers that run through the matrix. So this is actually, actually fibrocartilage. Um, so I would suggest that you look at some more fibrocartilage. I didn't get enough in here, I don't think, but you can see the chondrocytes. They're smaller than the other two types of cartilage. That's how you distinguish these from the other two types of, car of cartilage. They're smaller, okay? Much, much smaller, more wide, or less widespread. They're very far away from each other. This would be found in areas like your intervertebral disc, places where you need cushioning. All right, so um, this may look a little confusing to you. Is this two different things or is it one? All right, this is actually one type of tissue. So decide which type it is. One is just zoomed in more than the other. All right, and so hopefully you paused it and you've looked to see, I've got those distinct alternating bands. And so this must be a muscle fiber, but is it cardiac or is it skeletal? Well, I don't see inter, any intercalated discs, so this must be skeletal muscle, okay? So this is very well zoomed in, okay? Zoomed in very far. This is not, all right? And so you see more of this white here, okay? Uh, but you can still, if you look closely, you can still kind of see the alternating dark and light uh, striations here, okay? All right, what's this one at left? Looks well, kind of difficult, right? This is a uh, pseudostratified columnar epithelium. Um, if it's ciliated, the cilia is fuzzy, so I would say no. I will not choose uh, pictures where you can't tell clearly if it has cilia or not, or if it is keratinized or not, okay? You can see some goblet cells in there as well. All right, so this is just a view of skeletal muscle with a special stain. So don't be thrown off by these special stains. All right, so here's some, one of those difficult ones. This is fibrocartilage, okay? This is difficult because it's actually a transition type of tissue. Um, not transitional, but it, it's, it's one of those intermediate tissues, and it's kind of a blend between hyaline cartilage and dense fibrous connective. So that's what makes it kind of hard to tell what it is, okay? Um, so it's a dense arrangement of collagen fibers in an orderly, they're arranged in an orderly manner. Uh, usually you're going to see those chondrocytes located in the lacuna, uh, and you're going to have space between uh, the fibers are a little bit there, okay? And you can kind of see the matrix in the lacuna there, uh, the chondrocytes there. They're surrounded by a matrix, and that helps differentiate fiber cartilage from a connective tissue. All right, so what do you think this one is? It looks very similar to the other, okay? So is this a connective tissue or muscle? In a connective tissue, the collagen fibers are going to be more loosely packed. Uh, there could be more variation in the size of those fibers and the direction than the smooth muscle. So the smooth muscle is going to have a more regular direction. Um, the fibers are going to be closer together. Okay. Uh, nuclei in uh, connective tissue, the nu they're always going to be external to fibers, and in smooth muscle, they're kind of inside of the fibers, okay? You're going to have more nuclei as well, and if you'll notice, not all of the darker nuclei have um, white around them, whereas when we were looking at the the uh, connective tissue, there was more white. See, there's no white around that nuclei. There's some, like that one does, but some of these don't have white surrounding them. All right, so what is this one? Pause it. We've got a lumen, so it's epithelium. We have two layers, so it is stratified, which is rare to see just two layers, but it does happen. Usually when it happens, it's gonna be simple cuboidal epithelium. This is gonna be found around ducts and sweat glands. So here I wanted to give you a comparison, okay? Look at the layers here of the bone and the osteocytes running around the Herversion Canal. Um, you can see the tiny channels like spider legs that kind of extend from the lacunae. Um, we've got osteocytes in there, uh, in the caniculi. Um, they're interconnected, okay? Um, so the top one is the one we mostly look at, but if you look at the bottom, look for the same features because this is also going to be compact bone, all right? So, um, what is the classification here? It's going to be connective. 
All right, so this one's a little hard to tell. Pause it and see what you can figure out. Okay, so this is going to be cardiac. All right, so I've got those striations, which kind of tell me it is muscle. Uh, but if I look really closely there, I can see the intercalated disc. Um, on the right is a longitudinal section. You can see the cells are smaller in size than skeletal muscle. Uh, they're branching. The cells are joined end to end. Uh, the nuclei are single, not multinucleate. Okay, and we have those intercalated discs that are perpendicular to the muscle fiber. All right, so the bottom layer here is going to be relaxed, smooth muscles. The nuclei are elongated. The top is going to be that circular muscle. I wouldn't really pick that, but just so you know. Um, you're going to have rounded ends here on the bottom. When contracted, the nuclei can actually spiral or kink. Um, your cytoplasm is pink.